The United States is preparing to send up to six nuclear-capable bombers to northern Australia. The US Air Force has drawn up detailed plans to build dedicated facilities for the B-52s at Tyndall Air Base south of Darwin. The US says it will allow the squadrons to run operations and training missions out of the Northern Territory during the dry season. And Paul Dibb is the Emeritus Professor of Strategic Studies at the Strategic and Defence Studies Centre at ANU and he joins us now from Robertson, south of Sydney. Professor Paul Dibb, welcome. So there's already a significant US presence in the Northern Territory with troops rotating out of there each year. To what extent does this expand that? It's a significant forward advancement of both America and in my view Australia's desire to deter China. In the Cold War, by the way, just so your watchers understand this, in the 70s and 80s, B-52 bombers used to come out of Guam and practice cruise missile release over the Delamere range in the Northern Territory. In fact, it was simulating cruise missile release over Siberia. But that's then. Now, this is new. Um, I think they have now, we have now lengthened the runway at Tyndall to take B-52s, as you've seen in the pictures there. It's a big bomber. Um, the, if, if America really wanted to get close with a strategic bomber to strike China, it wouldn't do it from Tyndall. It's too far away. They would do it from Alaska or Guam or uh, even Hawaii. I think this is about our joint interest in showing to China they can't keep expanding their military presence in places like the South China Sea. And you will recall just a few years ago when Barack Obama was president, Xi Jinping, the leader of China, promised there would be no militarization of the South China Sea. Well, we now have Chinese fighters intercepting our P-8 reconnaissance aircraft and flying not only dangerously near, but scattering aluminium foil um, uh, that if it get into the engines would mean they crashed. The nearest military base in the south of the China Sea to Darwin is Fire Cross Reef, 2,800 kilometres. This is about forward deterrence. And so if, the, uh, if there are US bases closer to China, that could easily uh, be launching spots for B-52s. What, what's the point of doing this in Australia? It's... it's it's deterrence. Um, there are two forms of deterrence in uh, both nuclear and conventional uh, theology. One is deterrence by punishment, I mean, in directly attack the territory of China. The other one is deterrence by denial, which I believe we should be about in any case by acquiring more long range strategic missiles, but we'll have to wait on the new review for that. What this presence does, as far as America is concerned, and indeed it would be welcomed, I believe, by our friends and allies in places like Japan and South Korea, is to show to China you can't just keep pushing south and south through the straits and waterways of the South China Sea, which accounts, by the way, for 60% of our trade. Uh, and it's very dominant, that trade, not just for China, but for trade getting through to Japan and South Korea. So this is about a visible B-52 bomber presence, up to six. Yes, they'll do exercises and so on, but I imagine they'll do joint operations across the South China Sea to, to deter China by saying, you cannot keep kicking free military goals in the South China Sea. So what's the wisdom or otherwise of Australia getting involved in this? Sorry? What's the, what do you believe is the wisdom or otherwise of Australia getting involved in this? I think given the belligerence and the threats from China to us, including direct threats and coercion, this is the sort of forward presence that says to China, as I've just said, strategic and military expansion in a coercive and belligerent way is not just a matter of China having free kicks with no response from the West. In the event of China trying to take Taiwan and the US getting involved, would US facilities here potentially be targets? They might be, as by the way, would be the joint facility you didn't mention in the Northern Territory, Pine Gap, yeah. which is crucial to a warning for America. Um, the fact is that, you know, they would be able to, with regard to Taiwan, let alone China, the, um, uh, the American military base in Guam, um, which is a relatively short distance from Taiwan, would be the primary base, in my view, if America was involved in a war um, with China. 
Now, is there a prohibition on nuclear weapons on Australian soil, or could it be possible that these B-52s might carry nuclear weapons here? I would imagine, despite in the past America's concept of no, no, no confirmation, no denial, um, it would be a big step forward for us to store nuclear weapons in Tyndall. I can't imagine America being uh, wanting to do that. Uh, and if it came to nuclear weapons on board the B-52s, you've heard me say before, in the Cold War, they practiced cruise missile release over the Northern Territory, simulating Siberia. Um, nuclear weapons were not stored. And I believe in terms of our posture on nuclear weapons, uh, until a war actually occurred, or was in danger of occurring, and then we might have to think about it again. But let me stress, a, a contingency in Taiwan, the American presence in Guam is key, um, in, including with long-range strategic bombers such as the B-52, B-1 and B-2s. And then there would be American military facilities in both Japan and South Korea, which are both substantially closer to Taiwan. It's a fairly long distance from Darwin up to uh, Taiwan. Let me have a quick guess, about 8,000 kilometers. That would mean, by the way, that once they got into the air out of um, uh, Darwin, the Chinese will be able to track which direction these bombers were coming in. Right, now you've, you've touched on this already, but how significant is the US intelligence facility at Pine Gap near Alice Springs in terms of the US's global operations? And has there been in recent years notable upgrades there? Well, I'm not in a position to talk to you about upgrades. I'm no longer in the Department of Defense. I had that clearance on uh, Pine Gap for 30 years. I thought, I thought that Cold might War make you uh, uh, more free to, <laughs> to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> there are always limits to freedom. Um, <laughs> look, it, it, in the Cold War, it was absolutely central to early warning of um, uh, a Soviet attack on America. In that sense, it was a force for stability. Its central role was to be able to reassure America that the Soviet Union was abiding by the strategic nuclear arms control talks, SALT-1, SALT-2, and so on, by being able to count the missiles in their silos and reassure China that was all going on. So it was essentially uh, reinforcing America's confidence in not being taken over by a surprise attack from the Soviet Union. My understanding that Pine Gap now is not as uniquely crucial as it was in the Cold War, but it is still very important, and the Chinese will have worked out for themselves. If you can collect from a facility in the centre of Australia, from a satellite 32,000 kilometres uh, in geostationary orbit. If you can collect on Siberia, you sure as hell can collect on China. But again, the same thing would have to be in China's calculations. You poke America's eyes out and ruin its ability for early warning, then you actually, as a China, bring on a nuclear conflagration earlier rather than later. OK, Paul Dibb, always great to get your perspective. Thanks so much for talking to us this morning. My pleasure.